just have it be an introduction to the uh, first channel I've ever made. So um, this will be about, I was married 33 years and almost, well, headed on 34 now. We're still not divorced. And my wife hit me with divorce papers on January 6th. And I'll back up on Jan December 26th of last year, 2022. She... Um, Asked me to go on vacation to her sister's. I said, sure. Even bought her the plane ticket from Ohio to Georgia. She left and I thought it was odd. She wanted my son to drive her to the airport, not me. I said, okay, fine. I'll sit in the back seat. Didn't want to think anything too much of it, but still kind of unusual after 33 years of marriage. Anyhow, we drove her to the airport, hugged her, said goodbye. And after that, she never answered her phone, called me New Year's and told me to have a happy New Year's with the cats. She sounded drunk. Not unusual, she drinks every day almost at 6 o'clock p.m., just like clockwork. And then nothing else after that, so I turned her phone off, probably a bad move. But she wasn't answering it. I was getting really alarmed because it wasn't like her at all in 33 years of marriage not to answer her phone even more than a half a day or a day. So she hadn't answered it uh, over a week, week and a half, going on two weeks. And then January 6th is when I received divorce papers and soon after that, a restraining order, or vice versa, I forget exactly which. So restraining order was one year, totally bogus, um, blew my mind, I didn't have any idea why. I didn't have any idea why I was getting divorced, and that's what this channel will be about. I have uh, some ideas now, I've thought long and hard in a, over the past nine months. It's October 30th now, almost November, so yeah, definitely over nine months, close to ten. I have some theories and possibilities, but I'll never know why, and I don't really care at this point. The first couple of months, I wanted her back. After that, I realized she's not coming back, so it's time for me to move on with the second half of my life. But I got to tell you, it was hard. I, the first month or two months, I was crushed, totally devastated. I thought we were going to stay married forever, uh, retire together, hug each other, and and go on vacations around the world together. Money really isn't that much of an issue. We're not rich, but I've produced a good income. My wife's essentially never worked. We've raised one child together in thirty in the 33, almost the 34 years now. But the last nine months have been separated, of course. She doesn't want back in this house. She said she hates it, so I will take the house. That's fine with me. And... um Hopefully I will get the house and divorce. I have no idea. Her attorney is asking for sell everything and split up half the money and half and half of everything. I think it's silly. I don't really want to sell the house. I'll pay her half. I'll buy her out. She's had the house appraised, so that's really not an issue figuring out its value. Um, it could sell for less. It could sell for more. I don't know what her attorney's thinking, but hopefully my attorney will get... I don't care what happens, just so I get half and I stay in this house. That's the plan. So anyhow, I was totally devastated, in shock, and drinking a bottle of vodka, like a fifth and a half every day, through January, and then into February, and then I finally started to taper down and completely stop three, three months ago where I am right now, so I don't drink anymore. But it was rough. I mean, I very, very nearly killed myself with my Colt 45, same type of weapon I had as a military officer in the Navy. So, um... So, yeah, it was really tough. And after I almost killed myself, I drove east for three hours, turned around, drove back. I was going home, going to sleep. And then, of course, the Worcester City Police pulled me over and charged me. Well, the prosecutor eventually charged me with a felony five for having a loaded weapon within arm's reach within a vehicle. So now I'm a felon and unemployed since uh, <clears throat> May the 16th. And it's kind of hard to get a job when you have that felony pending in the background, even though July 5th, day after July 4th, we plead um, down to a misdemeanor. So it's basically a misdemeanor now until one year of probation. Then I get off of that. There's a lot going on. I'm just trying to give you an introduction here. I'm sure I will forget something, but I will cover that in future videos. I don't want to make this introductory video any more than 10 minutes. So, uh... Yeah, and the only other thing to note is in March, I didn't think I had a reason to live anymore. I thought I could never love again. I was totally broken. So 
I didn't want to give up on life, so I flew to Thailand and met a wonderful woman, Tiki, in Chiang Rai. She picked me up at the airport. That's the whole story. It was the most awesome hello I've ever received. And I'll talk about that later. And an awesome four days and nights with Tiki in Chiang Rai. And I wish I was still with her, kind of. She's exciting. She made my life, my blood flow faster. And um showed me I could at least love someone again. Subsequently, I have another friend. She's from also from Northern Thailand. She's more mature. Not quite as exciting, but very loving, doing all the right things. Um, I've listened to hundreds and hundreds of videos on Thai relationships. And I know how the bar girls operate and how they set up long-term scans where the family and everybody can be involved and even distant relatives can be involved to scam a foreigner out of their money. I don't think that was the case with my wife. I think she's just a little bit crazy. I don't know what is going on in her head, but evidently <clears throat> I found lots of old notes that she wasn't happy for quite a while. So I want to um, stop this and show some pictures. Well, I won't stop it. I mean, stop and then slice in some picture viewing. So um makes this first video a little more interesting than just me talking. But I think you got the idea. It's like just crazy. It's like crazy. How can someone just walk away from a marriage after 34 years, not even tell their partner something's wrong, and um, just disappear like a ghost. It's just crazy. I mean, that's really rude and inconsiderate. I don't understand why should someone would do it like that. I mean, I would, of course I'd be upset, but it's not like I'd kill her. She's like claiming to her, I guess her divorce attorney setting up for a lot of this stuff and a lot of the lies in the affidavit, but we'll get there. Um, but she plays like, I'll kill her, whatever. It's just crazy. But anyhow, it's just, the whole reason, the way she went about it is just, not right. And the same with my son. He's at West Point now. I don't know if I ever talk to him again. But we'll get into that later in another video. Of course, I don't want to keep repeating myself. But um, <clears throat> him and his mom were kind of in on this together. I don't quite get the dynamics there. But I guess sons are close to their mom. Her, I guess her mom's been working on me for uh, many years. Now, hindsight, I can see it. Like calling Child Protective Services on me. And they basically check me out say, nope. <laughs> No problem there. He's a great dad. I mean, he's raising a kid. He's a valedictorian in high school. He was always perfect grades without me even trying to get him to study that hard. I just made it fun for him. Spend tons of time with him. And um, uh, it's just crazy why him and his mom had the one-year restraining order, which the judge happily converted to a five-year restraining order after my wife testified in my Attorney would not let me testify because of the pending felony, so I just had to sit there and listen to all the lies and not object. I'm actually thinking about representing myself in the divorce on the hearing, the final hearing with the judge. However, we had a hearing, and there's one final piece of information, and I'll wrap this up with a few pictures. We had a divorce hearing, and 20 minutes into it, I was being cross-examined, and I was just losing it. I was just telling him, give me a 500 year restraining order. I don't freaking care. I don't want to talk to these two people again. I was just tell him how <clears throat> upset I was and how this totally was a bunch of bullshit. I guess my lawyer told me after a the judge reprimanded you and told you how to behave. And all you did was say bullshit under your breath. <laughs> so, <laughs> she stopped the trial and I got to get a mentally evaluated to see if I'm mentally competent to stand trial. Not only that, I am mentally competent. I was just really 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 had a bunch of pent-up anger and it just got unleashed especially when my son showed up from west point and uh showed up and didn't even tell me it was coming didn't tell my brother didn't tell my mom just shows up and sits on his mom's side of the courtroom that really got the anger up and i, I did not get it calmed down before the trial started and i was the first witness on cross examine so anyhow we're still going to have me mentally evaluated over the next Five months, a month from now, two months from now, and then two months with a final review. That's also crazy. The judge has me find my own evaluator and pick who I want to evaluate me for mental competency, which is strange in itself because I'll be paying them. Basically, if they're not that professional, they can probably say anything they want, or at least they'll be biased toward, you know, what I kind of desire. But anyhow, I think it was just a bunch of anger coming out. I really don't think I'm crazy. Okay. Here's a Cut first sample video. picture, and again, these are just random in random order, but 
we were at San Francisco, the Golden Gate Bridge in the background. That's my son and my wife. She cut her hair short. I don't know why. She shaved her head one time, and this is just starting to grow back. Like I said, I, I have no rhyme or reason to what some of the things she does is just strange. It's something related to Buddha. It's all I know. Um, next picture, I think this is at Carnegie Mellon University. It might be at Cornell when we were taking my son to class valedictorian to visit colleges. So I don't think I was that bad of a parent. I mean, she raised, she raised him when he was a toddler, but the older years were pretty much teenage years of my responsibility. And we never really had any problem until this divorce thing. It just weird. There's my wife, her sister, her sister's daughter, and her sister's husband, Skip. And his claim to fame is he got on disability later age, and he's just so happy he never has to work, and he can collect disability in Georgia. So my wife's down there living with them now, coming up here for the trial. But good luck with that. They're scammers. They use the government for everything they can. As far as I know, I don't want to be super liable or anything. Just my opinion from what I know about them. Uh, my son and my wife, where was this? I forget where that bench was. Um, I forget. Anyhow, it looks like they're having Dunkin' Donuts. My son with Eileen, I guess my wife, it shows on Google, lived with Eileen in Akron, about 30 miles away, the first few months after she hit me with divorce papers. So, of course, Eileen's not my friend anymore. Making a lot of enemies here. My wife, the biggest pumpkin at the Wayne County Fair. Oh, she got drunk and was falling down on the fairway. People had to help me pick her up. And then she disappeared. Look, I was looking at something for like three seconds. She disappeared and I had to go hunting for her. Finally found her at the front gate with the sheriff and I took her home. My, my son, Ben, he's at the Benny Havens Lounge. He can't go in. He's not old enough. But there's a famous person called Benny Havens and he helped found West Point. Not officially, but unofficially, he ran a tavern there and supported and cared for the first several classes of cadets that went through the early um, cadet program at West Point. My son playing varsity high school tennis. He's a four-year varsity tennis player. First week at West Point, shave their head, make them pose for a picture. That's just a canvas background. It's not, not real, but it is an image of the real building. Um, I guess that's it. Some pictures on this other computer screen. Oh, they took my hard drive back up, so I had to go bring up an old computer to recover most all my pictures. So, another thank you very much situation. Anyhow, my wife, I don't know where, but fairly recent picture. Us at Cruppy Krupp Beach on vacation. Oh, a smiley, more happy picture. She's hard to take pictures of smiling. You really got to beg her. Me and my son at West Point on college travel trips during the pandemic. We couldn't visit in any school. We just walked around on the outsides. When he's young at Dead Horse Point, uh, it's uh, what uh, Southern Utah. Us on the Great Wall, of course, of China, when it was easier to travel to China, and our tour guide. Sky Go. She was a very good tour guide. Saved us money and time. She was worth her price in gold. Um, my son played in the orchestra, and this is his uh, band concert or something. Band symphony? I don't know. One of the band groups that dresses up and plays somewhat classical music, but all he played the baritone horn here. Orchestra. He was number one violinist his senior year. Letting a turtle loose for good luck. At a band competition at Maslin Tigers Stadium, a good high school football team around here. Northeast Ohio takes football very serious. Back at San Francisco again in the USS New Jersey. Ben always likes studying history and reading about the Roman army and, of course, eventually Pearl Harbor, World War II, all that stuff. Back at the beginning. That's it. I'll close the video here. See you next time. Bye-bye.